Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? It is Tuesday, January the 10th, 2012. This is episode number 73 of Timberwolves Explosion. I thank each and every one of you always for downloading and listening to this show, which is available on the sportsstuff.com and on iTunes. So, yes, thank you always for downloading and listening to this show. Great to have you on board once again today. Thank you, all of you out there, for <laughs> the wonderful listenership on episode number 72. It's, uh, it's looking good. Thank you guys very much for being a part of things. The fan base is growing again. Um, welcome to the welcome to the Timberwolves bandwagon, I guess. Those of you new listeners out there, <laughs> and uh, or welcome back to the to the team. Welcome back to the show. Yep. Welcome back to the Rubio Revolution, or welcome to the Rubio Revolution, I should say, more appropriately. It's uh yeah, the fan base has really gotten behind this team. Unfortunately, we are now three and uh, seven after a loss against the Chicago Bulls tonight, so the record isn't exactly like kicking, uh, isn't exactly shocking the world or doing great, but certainly a dramatically improved team, clearly a team that can beat good teams, unfortunately though, still more than capable of losing to bad ones, unfortunately at home in a couple of games, uh, the Timberwolves did come off an emotional back-to-back victory against Dallas and San Antonio with Texas two-step, though it was here. The true Texas two-step is when we actually go to Texas and play Houston and San Antonio or Houston-Dallas or Dallas-San Antonio. You know, you get the idea. Um, Because there's always a Texas two-step every year. Every single year you get a Texas two-step because you want to keep the games semi-close to each other when you travel. That just kind of makes sense that they would do that. Uh, You get the idea. But, yeah, after that nice emotional couple wins, Timberwolves lose one at, at home against Memphis, 90 to 86 on Wednesday the 4th. That was a little bit frustrating. But yeah, so the Wolves basically go 1-4 and four in the past week. It's gonna, I'm going to try to do these on Tuesdays. i um, going to try to. It probably would make sense to do it around Tuesdays. That's kind of how I had been doing it in the past. Sometimes maybe on the Friday if I get Marcus the Forecaster. But a lot of these solo shows will be, it'll be like a Timberwolves Tuesday. Yeah, good times. Kind of like how I would do my shows. I used to be in a routine. Purple Mafia Monday or Sunday. Timberwolves Tuesday or Wednesday and Wild Friday or Saturday. You know, Brave the Wild Friday or Saturday. It's kind of cool. So you get the idea. Um, but yeah, the Timberwolves losing to Memphis was a little bit frustrating. So yeah, we have five games to talk about. you got the Wolves in Memphis, Wolves in uh, Cleveland, which is really, really bad. Uh, the Wolves and Washington, Toronto, and Chicago. As the Wolves had their first back-to-back-to-back dilly. That came to a close tonight. All losses. Actually, no, they weren't all losses. We did beat Washington, so that was good. But unfortunately, yeah, kind of a little bit disappointing after that. Uh, one quick side note I'll mention real quick. <laughs> Boy, I'm talking weird tonight. But the Timberwolves uh, did, as mentioned, or I mean, as you know, the Timberwolves did beat Washington pretty handily on Sunday. And Washington went 0 8 at that time. They'd been winless. And then the Wolves lose to Toronto the next night. What's nice is to see in Toronto get beat pretty pretty handily by Washington. So that kind of makes the Wolves look a little bit better in some ways because we beat Washington, but I guess the comeback is, well, we lost to Toronto. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you, know, you can't win. You can't win, can you? <laughs> Not really, huh? But, yeah, we're also going to talk about Kevin Love a bit today, of course, and as we always do. But, you know, we're getting kind of to the 11th hour here for the uh, contract extension we're going to look at some stuff on Real GM regarding the Timberwolves, uh, Timberwolves news and Timberwolves stuff going on. Uh, very cool. Always love Real GM. But first and foremost, we're going to talk about the actual games played. Ricky Rubio continuing to shine. Not every game, but on this particular night, Ricky Rubio recording a second double-double of the season. Getting about as many minutes as Luke Ridnour. Both of them getting about 30 minutes. Rubio getting about one more minute than Ridnour officially. Wesley Johnson, there you go. I mean, this is not the first time you saw this from Wesley Johnson <laughs> this year. This is not the first time you're going to see this from Wesley Johnson this particular year. He only played 16 minutes in the game. Now, this was, uh, as mentioned, Wednesday, January the 4th, about a week ago. Over 5 from the floor, no points for Wesley Johnson in the game. I have no idea what what's going on with Wesley Johnson. Absolutely no idea. Uh, Michael Beasley... Uh, same old crap, 5 of 16 from the floor, 
He recorded a double-double, had five turnovers. I'm just, like I said, <laughs> if, I mean, he, you don't want to aggressively shop him because that'll make people say, hey, guess what, uh, you know, <laughs> we don't need to offer you very much because obviously you're just trying to trade him. So, you know, it just kind of says that they, they know we're trying to get rid of him, so what the heck's the point of trying to... <laughs> it's like, what's the heck? what the heck is the point to try to, like, offer us uh, a lot for a guy that we clearly don't want. You know, it's just a negotiation thing. Uh, Kevin Love, though, we'll just get off of Beasley right now. I mean, what's the point? This is Michael Beasley's second last game, by the way, since uh, basically becoming inactive due to an ankle injury. Kevin Love, it's like, hey, there, there you go again. 27 and 14. Yeah, comments but uh, Barkley and Kevin Love have said this past week again also. I mean, the guy is the real deal. We'll get to that in a little bit. I'd like to split things up a little bit today, games, and then uh, some little bit of talk, news, and all that stuff. That's the way I used to do it, and that's the way I'm going to be able to do it this week. The Wolves played good in the game, but not good enough. They just didn't. Uh, Memphis came out strong. The Wolves and Memphis kind of paralleled in the first half. Wolves had a great third quarter, which is like the opposite of what they've been doing for the past two years under Kurt Rambis. The third quarter had been the Wolves' death nail. But, the, but they just did not get the job done in the fourth quarter. Timberwolves did not. Uh, giving up 33 points to the Memphis Grizzlies. A very, very frustrating game. No Zach Randolph. You know, you figure you have a home game against the Memphis Grizzlies team. You're coming off an emotional victory for your club. You played very, very well against Dallas and San Antonio. Just kicked their butt. You're still at home. Uh... Memphis doesn't even have their best player in Zach Randolph with a pretty significant injury, uh, just a, just a, like a, the night before, and you can't win. It's just this was this was disappointing. This was definitely this was one of those games where it's just like, doggone it! You know the Wolves were trailing by ten at some points during this quarter. By the way, uh, a, a disappointing game, just very disappointing. It's like man, it just felt like a step back, and this would definitely uh, dovetail things for the Wolves as we move on. I mean, it's just move on in the, or the rest of the week here. It's just a sign that, like, the team's better, but not that much better, you know? Not that good yet. They're good, but not that good. And that's too bad. It's like we wish we were a little bit further along in development. Tony Allen, by the way, made all his shots. But basically, all the Memphis Grizzlies shot extremely poor in this game. 41% as a team. You got Rudy Gay, 7 of 17. You got Cunningham. I barely even know who that is. <laughs> you know, I, I barely know who Dante Cunningham is. That's how obscure he is, and he's starting. Uh-huh, because what's his name? Oh, what's his name? Zebo was hurt. Uh, this was just one of those games where it's like, come on. It's, you know, guys were not hitting easy shots. Beasley was missing shots all over the place. Close shots to the rim. 10-foot shots, 7-foot shots. Nothing was going in. Darko was the same old story. He's, he's kind of right back to where we expected all along. His offensive game sucks. His defensive game is, uh, well, whatever. He didn't get any blocks in the game. Didn't change many shots that I can think of. Whatever. It, mm. Darko Milicic just kind of is what he is, and everybody knows it. Absolutely. This was this is a very this is the kind of game where it's like come on why why did we not win this game it's just guys were not hitting shots that needed to and as bad as the Grizzlies shot the Wolves shot a whole percentage point even worse forty percent there's your ball game uh, the other major reason the Wolves shot fifty two percent from the free throw line folks fifty two not going to win games doing that you're, you're just not Rubio missed both of his free throws. Uh, Anthony Randolph, who this was his first game back <laughs> since being completely benched after just a stupid idiot showing against the Dallas Mavericks. Completely benched in the Spurs game. Came back and got 8 points in 8 minutes, so def definitely an instant offense guy. Randolph actually steps it up here, so uh, apparently, quite apparently, uh, Mr. Uh, Adelman has gotten to Zach Randolph early, and that's good. After, all, again, a horrible show against those Dallas Mavericks, as we talked about in the previous episode, this, of course, being episode number 73. That's right, 73. But, really, anything more I want to say about this game? No. They shot poorly and lost. They shot even worse against a team that didn't even play very well. Not a good basketball game. Not a good basketball game. No. I mean, Michael Conley. Mike Conley, Michael Conley, whatever you want to call him, who's a 
continuing to improve at, at the point guard position. He's kind of like Kyle Lowry, where he just kept getting a little bit, little bit better every year until all of a sudden it's like, you know, this guy's actually pretty good. He had eight assists, but four turnovers, and uh, the, the three of 13 from the floor, it's like that says it all. Nobody from either team other than Tony Allen shot well. Marcus Gasol was 3 of 11. I mean, why didn't the Wolves win this game? It's just like, dang it. Very poorly played game. Um, the turnovers, the Wolves had 17, and the Grizz only had 10. So that's a big thing right there. Only 10 turnovers for the Grizzlies. Great ball control. They also had 13 steals in the game. That's a huge problem as well. Huge, huge problem as well. Beasley with four turnovers. Ridiculous. Rubio, or five turnovers for Beasley. Rubio with four. Kevin Love with three. Uh, the, the turnovers on this team are, <coughs> excuse me, extremely high. That's a huge, huge problem. Huge problem. The turnovers are extremely high for this team. Let's just move on because I can't take it anymore. I didn't like this game. I don't think anybody else did. So we move on to Friday, the 6th. The Minnesota Timberwolves take their worst loss of the year. in a bit, And uh, the whole game. I mean, the Wolves did not lead in this whole game. I mean, did they lead 2 to nothing, 4 to 2 Who cares? Who cares if they did or who cares if they didn't? You lost 98-87 against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Oh my god! That's just one of those things, folks. That's just one of those things. Completely unacceptable performance by the Timberwolves against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Completely unacceptable. I mean, wow. Really? A home game, by the way, folks. Friday night, home game. Wow. Wow. 16 turnovers. I mean, you got Love and Beasley. Love and Beasley. Four turnovers for Love. Three for Beasley. Three for Rubio. I mean, Rubio is turning the ball over, unfortunately, but the assists are there for the most part. But even in a bad game, Ricky Rubio still manages to shoot 50% and get five assists and get at least 10 points off the bench. Not bad, but a overall horrible game. Ricky Rubio did get into foul trouble, by the way. Uh, there are a couple of Twitter interactions during this game as well that I'll get to here in a second. This is, in a way, was like the game of the week, I guess. <laughs> I got the most interaction. Beasley played kind of well uh, on paper in some ways. Though, I mean, yeah, he missed another. I mean, again, the guy is not making sh- close shots. He's, he's not. He didn't shoot a three-pointer in the game, which is nice. Um, the Wolves are getting way too trigger-happy from three-point range, by the way. And this game says it all right here. I mean, look, look, look at this. Look at this crap. But by the way, too... Ricky Rubio had four fouls in the game, did get in foul trouble, and that's why Luke Rittenauer had 38 freaking minutes. L. Horton wanted to mention that to me as well. L. Horton, yep, the voice of the Wolves was kind enough to tweet me. I'll get to that in a sec. 2 of 11 for Rittenauer, 6 assists, 3 turnovers. And it's like, why the hell is this guy in? Why the hell? But it's like, yeah, Rubio. It's just one of those things where, you know, you react in frustration, and then it's like, oh, that's right, Rubio was in foul trouble, and L. Horton... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> made sure to remind me about that when I was bitching about that. But yeah, one of six from the floor for Luke Ridenauer. Um Nobody, uh, Kevin Love had an awesome game. Yeah, he did. He, the funny part, though, he still shot under 50%, which is kind of frustrating. He made 10 or 12 from the free throw line, which is outstanding. But really, we are not a good free throw shooting team. Darko Milicic, one of six from the line. I mean, talk about hack of Darko. One of six. One of six, folks. Terrible. Wesley Johnson only had three attempts and played only 17 and a half minutes. One basket made. Two points for Wesley Johnson. Um, this is getting kind of... I, I, I just I never thought Wesley Johnson was going to be this invisible. You know? I, I'm really sad. I'm really sad to see this because myself and Marcus the Forecaster, who I hope will join this show soon, I hope the next show, Marcus the Forecaster, is with me again. I mean, I love talking to the Wolves with him. But uh, look at Wesley Johnson. Mm. The guy has just disappeared. He has just he has disappeared. But yeah, as noted, Michael Beasley hurt. He also made a quote uh, earlier, or he made a quote about the injury, saying that hey, I'm you know I'm just going to sit out this time and let it heal because last year I played with the ankle problem and stunk. Basically, is what he said. And yeah, he's right. I'm paraphrasing, by the way. That's not exactly how he said it. But Beasley did play poorly last year when he played hurt with the ankle problem. So with another ankle deal, 
Michael Beasley, just sit out and stay out, and I guess that's the best thing you can do. <laughs> Kevin Love makes a kind of a funny crack about Beasley later on. Kind of funny. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. It's uh, Kevin Love, though. I mean, look at that. 29 14. It's like no matter what you do, Kevin Love plays awesome basketball until last night against Toronto. Yeah, we'll get to that again when, when we get to it. Nikola Pekovic seeing his first playing time of the year and did nothing in a minute and a half. So who cares? This is another one of those games. The Wolves shot like absolute crap. 39% from the floor, folks. 39% from the floor. And it's like you look at guys like Derek Williams and Ricky Rubio. They both shot 50%. They both got double-digit points. And they only played about half the game. Only played about half the game. Like, I, I mean, I would give... D- <laughs> just about anything to see Beasley and Ridnauer not starting and to see Rubio and Derek Williams starting. But Rick Eilman's a great coach for a reason, I guess, and we're, we are where we are for a reason, I guess. But heh, you can't help being a little bit frustrated seeing how much better Rubio and Williams are than those two and to see those guys get starting minutes and the other guys not. It's weird. But really, uh, outside of Kevin Love having another off-the-charts game, superstar-type game, this was an, an absolute uh, abomination. <laughs> this was an abomination, ladies and gentlemen. The Wolves failed in every quarter. Every quarter, folks. Oh, but they beat the Cavaliers by one point in the fourth, yet they still lose by 11 again to the Cleveland Cavaliers, who became 4-3 and three at the time. Yes, they're improving. But yeah, Kyrie Irving had seven turnovers in the game. I mean, it's not like he was that great, was he? Anton Jameson was beating the Wolves up down low, and the Wolves, again, were getting foul trouble. But you look at the Cavaliers' starting lineup of or Kyrie Irving, Anthony Parker, Anderson Varejo, Anton Jameson, Omri Caspi, and you're just like, really? We're, really? Is this the best we could do? Hmm. And I guess, I guess it is. <laughs> well, on this particular night, anyway. I mean, what an abomination of a game. Horrible. We're going to move on quickly, and I mean really quickly, because, no. <laughs> this was a horrible game. Timberwolves end a nasty little two-game losing streak with a butt whooping of the Washington uh, Wizards. On Sunday, January the 8th, the Wizards are handed their eighth consecutive loss to start off the season. Wizards go to 0-8, as I've said. The Wolves win 93-72, a 21-point drubbing in the nation's capital. And it's the first time the Wolves beat the Washington Wizards since 2003, when Sam Cassell was the point guard of the Wolves. 2003-2004, and when the Wolves are beating everybody. Wayne Ellington, that's right. Wayne Ellington enters the starting lineup. Not Derek Williams or Ricky Rubio. But Wayne Ellington, I mean, you'd think you'd maybe, maybe would like to see Derek Williams start at small forward or at power forward and move Kevin Love to center. I, I don't know, whatever. I guess, but I mean, but Edelman's pretty much saying Derek Williams is a, is a four, not a three. Derek Williams is a four. I think I called him a five last show, which I don't know why I did that. A five is a center, so four, pardon me, guys. Derek Williams is going to be playing the four, so I guess that's the deal. Kevin Love is not going to start at center, but probably play a lot of center. So, But Williams did get a ton of playing time. 30 minutes and did fairly well in it. Four of seven from three-point range. He scorched those nets out there. His efficiency rating, along with Ricky Rubio's, were plus 29. Tops on the team by a, long, by a pretty wide margin. Rubio had a career high, uh, a new career high, 14 assists. 14 assists for a Timberwolves point guard. It's like, are you mad? <laughs> yeah. 14 assists for a Timberwolves point guard. Amazing. Amazing effort by the Wolves. They won in every quarter. They led the whole way. Great game by Minnesota. Very cool. Guys like Randolph and Pekovic pretty much buried at the end of the bench. It was an eight-man rotation type of game. Berea missed the past couple games. Missed again. With a hamstring deal, Beasley, of course, out with a mid-foot sprain. Not an ankle sprain, mid-foot sprain. And the other guys, Miller, Webster, and Lee, all legitimately injured and out, unfortunately. So you got five guys hurt at this time. That's a lot. (laughs) Yes, it is. Um, 
but really everybody played pretty well for the Wolves. Rubio with got it's got to be his worst shooting night. Five of fourteen from the floor. That's a lot of shot attempts for Ricky Rubio, man. Second on the team. Second on the team for Ricky Rubio. That's pretty crazy. Right now are pretty efficient overall, but not many. But only two assists in about thirty-one minutes. Ten thirteen point game. Eh, that's great. But guys like Derek Williams. I mean, Derek Williams had an outstanding game. He attempted seven threes. Uh, I was going to say, too, also in the previous game, the Wolves shot 4 of 20. That's right, 4 of 20 from three-point range against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Why are we shooting four or uh, 20 three-pointers anyway? It's just getting to be too much. Wolves attempted 26 in this game, but they actually made most of them. Or not most of them, but they made a lot of them. 39%, that's pretty good from three-point range. Uh, I already forgot about the Twitter reactions. A couple of them are during the Cleveland game, and it was when I was ranting on Twitter, like, why the heck are we losing to this team? Steven Lattell, if I'm saying his name right, and I hope I am, says we're missing Berea. Turnovers, can't make a shot. Guys are passing up shots, etc., etc., etc. That's also very true. That's very, very true. I ranted about uh, Luke Ridnour. As mentioned, Alan Horton responded to me with, he didn't have a good game, that's for sure, but who else would you have played? But it's like, oh, man. Mm. And I was thinking, well, it's like not trying to be a Rubio Rube, but it's like Rubio makes the, everybody better. The game is better. It's just a fact. It's not trying to be a Rubio Rube. It's just a fact. Lyle Horton responds with, well, that Rubio had to sit for part of the second half with four fouls. Just don't have many options with J.J., West and Wayne struggling. J.J. out and West and Wayne struggling. And Yep, obviously very true. And Alan Horton dead on there with those comments, of course the uh, voice of the wolves on the radio. Um, it's just one of those deals. It's one of those deals. It was just one of those games where nothing really worked out. Brian Svensson also responds with, we're young. I think I think we'll get the W's rolling pretty soon. I'm really happy that we are looking like a real team, and that's a good thought right there. That is a really good thought right there. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I can't believe I did that. But... Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's just, yeah, it's just one of those games. Uh, forgive me again out there, listeners, for, yeah, not getting to those tweets during the Cleveland game, so I apologize for that. Just kind of got ahead of myself. A couple of tweets during the uh, the Washington Wizards game. It's like the Wizards, you know, just right out of the gate look like total garbage. Total garbage. Turnovers, bad shots, bad shot attempts, missing easy shots. They looked like, like last year's Wolves, quite frankly. Derek Rick tweets to me with, uh, of course, twitter.com forward slash wolves explosion is the Twitter account. We'd like you to follow that if you could. Twitter.com forward slash wolves explosion. Derek Rick, by the way, does say, good, we need a blowout win. It's about time we get one of those. And it's, uh, you know, I got to think that Flip Saunders is probably going to get fired this year. Of course, the coach of the Wizards, Flip Saunders, unfortunately, looks like it, it's looking like he's going to get fired. It's like his third year, I believe, in Washington. And the team has not gotten better. That is a bad sign for a, a guy, even if he is a semi-established coach. Derek Rick says, "Ha ha, he will be. He will be Gophers coach. Trust me, Tubby will be fired." Interesting thought by Derek Rick right there. Interesting thought by Derek Rick. The thought about Tubby getting fired. Uh, a lot of us would love to see Tubby Smith as the head, or excuse me, Flip Saunders as the head coach of the Gophers. In fact, a lot of people think that would be like the perfect match for him. And, you know, it's that thought has been out there for about eight years now, man. And maybe it'll happen. Maybe. Maybe this is finally the year. Maybe. Maybe. Justin Young. Justin Young. I believe this is his first response to me. He says, uh, T-Wolves should bury them early, but that starting lineup is inept. Why let them stay in the game? Yeah, because guys like Wayne Ellington and Ridnour were not really playing that well. Darko Milicic is horrible. Wesley Johnson Look at this, folks. Look, look, look at this line. I'm in about 20 minutes, 2 of 8 from the floor, and 5 points for Wesley Johnson. Missed all four three-point attempts. Wesley Johnson, I mean, I don't know what has happened to him. I, I'm shocked. Honestly, I'm shocked with Wesley Johnson. I was very excited about him coming into this season. I thought he looked like he was on his way to becoming a very good basketball player. The way he played last season and the way he continued to improve as the season progressed, he started showing a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more, and it's like, let's just give him the damn ball, let him shoot, get him to shoot more. Well, I have no idea what's going on. No idea. 
Wayne Ellington is not an everyday starter, Justin, but he'll, at least he had a good game in this particular game. In about 35 minutes, made more, made five of eight, two of three from three points, 13 points. But the one thing about yeah, Wayne Ellington overall, he's he, he's kind of like a poor, he's kind of like Allen Houston where he just scores and that's it. He's not really going to do anything else, like not rebound, not assist. But surprisingly, he got three steals in the game. Though with a team that turns the ball over as much as Washington, that's going to happen. And Washington had 15 turnovers. John Wall, not somebody I'm impressed with right now at all. Like, I am not impressed with John Wall at all. I mean, I, I think his attitude kind of stinks, too. I don't think John Wall is going to be nearly, nearly the cat miss star that everybody thought he was going to be coming into last year's draft. I don't think so. If it changes, it changes. But as of right now, I think he's like a Steve Francis type where he's just, he's never going to be that great. Steve Francis had a couple of good statistical years, but overall, whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever. Never really the kind of guy that's going to be a carry, carry your team into another level. I don't think John Wall is capable of carrying his team to another level. I, I don't see it. If it changes and he improves, great. But as of right now, again, I don't see it. But a very, very fun game for the Wolves overall. <laughs> it's funny, though. I mean, they shot 45% as a team. That's not bad. But at the same time, 45% is nothing to get super excited about. It's it's really not. Yet it felt like they shot like 70% because of the way we crushed the crap out of this inept Wizards team. <laughs> And Kevin Love, very quietly, 7 of 16 from the floor, not great, had a 20 and 16 game. And it's just like, it's coming to that point. It's almost like, yeah, Kevin Love, where was he tonight? Well, he's still got 20 and 16. Jeez. Yeah. It's come to that point where like a 20 and 16 game for Kevin Love is like quiet. That's how good Kevin Love is becoming. Yes, sir. I mean, Kevin Love is the real deal, folks. And everybody knows it. Everybody knows it, not just Wolves fans. No, not just Wolves fans. You got guys on um, that ESPN NBA Today podcast. You know, that's like the number one NBA podcast on the probably in the world right now with like a million listeners or whatever. Ryan Rossillo and other guys like Mike Yam and others. I forget who the other one is that's, that hosted the recent one. Talked with John Hollinger and it's like, is Kevin Love a Max guy? Yes. Yes, just right away. He just said yes. And... I, I don't disagree. It's it's come to that point. Clearly the guy is a legit super duper du- du- player. It's like you look at those numbers and you think, yeah, yeah, sure. He's not going to do that all the time. But, yeah, he is doing it all the time. And he's like, what, fifth in the league in scoring right now. I, I just cannot believe it. Okay, I spoke too soon, didn't I? <laughs> Kevin Love did manage to get a double-double, though, in the back-to-back deal. January the 8th. No, 9th already. January the 9th. Monday, January the 9th, the Wolves head to Toronto. The Wolves never went in Toronto, and the Wolves did not win in Toronto. No, they didn't. 97-87, a 10-point defeat at the hands of Dwayne Casey, Jose Calderon, and uh, (laughs) Andrea Barganani, who you can say what you want about him, being the number one overall pick, and was it 06? He's, it's been a long time in coming, but the guy can score baskets, man. He had 31 points in this game. The guy is a scorer. Averaged about 21 last year, and he's averaging about 23 this year. But eh, overall, I don't think he's like a game-changing player, yet the guy is certainly a scorer. Very, very impressive. Andrea Barganani is impre- more and more impressive day-to-day. He certainly is. Jose Calderon still the point guard in Toronto and still playing okay. J.J. Barea comes back with a bang for the Wolves and a 16-point effort off the bench. You got it like that. The guy's everywhere. He just finds a way to get the job done. He led the Wolves in scoring. Uh, the past couple of nights, Derek Williams has been emerging and emerging and emerging. <laughs> There's, it's it's impressive. With a uh, he was the overall player of the game for the Wolves, a 13.8 rebound effort. Darko Milicic, just non-factor. Kevin Love, though, the story of the game. Ricky Rubio with a quiet, uh, a bad shooting night again. Only 2 of 9 from the floor, which surprised people in about 38 minutes. But uh, Kevin Love was the story of the night in terms of a big reason why the Wolves lost. He was only 3 of 16 from the floor, which is remarkable. 3 of 16 from the floor. 
for Kevin Love. So definitely, and he only made half of his free throws. The Wolves shot 34% from the floor. De- definitely their worst showing of the year in that category. Wayne Ellington definitely back down to earth with only 5 points in 23 minutes. Non-factor. Look at Wesley Johnson, folks. And like I said, this wasn't the first time. Wesley Johnson 0-5 last night. No points in 20 minutes. Again, Wesley Johnson, Wesley Johnson, where are you? Oh, where, oh, where are you, Wesley Johnson? I am just... What do you do with Wesley Johnson? What do you do with him? I have no answer. I have no answer with him. What's wrong with him? Seriously. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I... I, does he really suck this bad, or is there some type of mental block, or what the hell happened to him? Well, seriously, you know you look so you so totally look forward to a, a guy coming into his second year who looked pretty strong as a rookie, looked pretty strong, lots of defensive ability, great athletic ability, three point threat all all of, all the all day. He even playing small forward now with Michael Beasley out. We you know definitely one of his strengths. You know, me and the forecaster have long said, you put Wesley Johnson a small forward and bam, there you go. It's a 15.3 block game, right? You know, he could be almost like a, like a Josh Smith in some ways. In some ways. But no, I mean, no matter where you put the guy, something's really screwed up with him mentally right now. I got no answers, folks. And I'm really sorry to say that. No answers at all. And the Wolves had no answer for Toronto, Bargnani and such. <laughs> And when you, I mean, when you're shooting three of sixteen from the floor, your best player, your most consistent player, your overall just stud shoots three of sixteen from the floor and makes half of his free throws, five of ten, by the way. There's no way in hell you're going to win a game like that. There's just no way unless somebody else majorly steps up. Berea, Williams, and Rubio all hitting double digits off the bench. Randolph barely missed double digits. Wow, though, what a frustration. It's kind of like, yeah. Derek Williams and Rubio, dang it. Those guys should be starting, but they're not yet. And neither one of them even shot well, yet they still managed to get into double digits. Crazy, huh? Crazy. Very crazy indeed. This was just one of those games, you watch it, and you just stare at the TV screen, and you're like, this is boring. (laughs) This is boring. You know, watching guys miss easy shots, watching guys shoot way too many three-pointers. I mean, Kevin Love... The other night, shot eight. He shot eight tonight as well. You see him shoot seven some nights. You see Derek Williams shooting seven three-pointers. It's like, maybe this team should chill from three a little bit. Seven of 24 in the game, but good for 29%. 24 three-point attempts? I, I, I don't know. I mean, hmm. I don't know. At least Toronto shot worse in that category. <laughs> three of 19, but still. Still... Why are we shooting shooting so many threes? I don't know what the obsession is. I mean, some some guys can make them. Kevin Love can make them, but I don't know if I want him shooting eight or nine three pointers every night. Uh, I don't want a Chris Webber type player. I didn't like Chris Webber, and I don't want Kevin Love to try to be that type of guy. I just don't. You know, where the power forward hoisting threes all night. It's kind of ridiculous. It it just is. The bench definitely outplayed the starters, though, in the game. There, there's just no doubt about it. Everybody, from Anthony Randolph to Ricky Rubio, outplayed the starters, all of them. Oh, but Kevin Love got another double-double and 14 rebounds with his 13 points. Definite season low in the point category and also got in foul trouble. Tolliver fouled out in the game. It's just everything pretty much sucked in the game. Guys like Amir Johnson and Andre Bargnani walked all over this team. And that's all there is to say disappointing effort. Again, though, again, the Wolves never win in Toronto, even when they're at their best, so that's one thing. It's just like, it's the air there or something. I don't know what it is. So that brings us to tonight's kind of a semi-thriller type of game. Ricky Rubio showing his value yet again, going against the league's MVP, the reigning MVP, Derek Rose, head-to-head. The Bulls win 111-100. to 100. 111-100 to 100 in a outstanding game in target center. Wolves just unfortunately could not get the job done. The Bulls kick butt, were kicking butt early on. Minnesota making a furious comeback though from the second quarter into the third. A very, very fun game. 
Wolves trailed by as much as 24 early on and had a lot of people thinking, boy, this team is just going to get their butts kicked by one of the best teams in the league. Yet Rubio and Ridenauer with awesome games. Ridenauer playing a lot of shooting guard in this particular one, and understandably why. Wayne Ellington pretty much worthless. Wesley Johnson, well, he actually shot fairly well, but only played 10 minutes in the game. How about that? Guys like Anthony Tolliver and... Uh, Anthony Randolph both having big games. Why worry about Wesley Johnson at this point? Wayne Ellington, though, only eight minutes. Marco Millicic, eight minutes. Crazy when you look at that. It was just, it was like as if Adelman was like, you know what? Screw it. These guys suck. Wayne Ellington, Darko Millicic, Wesley Johnson all played under 10 minutes in the game. It's like guys just sit the hell down. Anthony Randolph really stepped up. <laughs> Stepped up in a big way with a, in about 29 minutes at 18 points tonight. And he looked awfully good. He looked awfully good. Anthony Tolliver probably played, yeah, he absolutely played way too much in this game. I mean, <laughs> he played too much. I, I don't know. I would maybe have given some more of those minutes to uh, Wesley Johnson because he actually made more than half of his shots for once. Maybe a few more for Derek Williams. But then again, Derek did not have a good game either. Only one of seven from the floor. Berea, a factor, an energy factor, nice, double digits again. I mean, the guy gets double digits every game, J.J. Berea. I mean, when you see J.J. Berea, and when you saw him as a member of the Mavericks as well, Dallas Mavericks, did you really see him as a guy who's going to get 10 points every night? It's like, yeah, I guess so. And, and like, in not that much playing time, I mean, only 18 minutes, amazing. Ridenauer shot the lights out, which is hard to believe. It was just one of those nights where he was he was 8 of 11 from the floor, made all three of his threes. Awesome. A 12 assist night for Rubio. 12 assists. Again, just when he steps on the court, for whatever reason, the team, the energy of the team changes dramatically. The chemistry with guys like Randolph, guys like uh, Berea, you know, giving, giving him shots. Chemistry with, with guys like that. Even chemistry with Luke Ridnauer, who again played a lot of shooting guard tonight. And uh, the chemistry was just phenomenal with guys like that. Ricky Rubio, he, he can get chemistry with anybody. But certainly chemistry with Anthony Randolph, making things very entertaining with alley-oops and such. Just a very fun game to watch. Watch the Wolves make a comeback, but unfortunately the, the result was not good. The Bulls came out and took the took, took the Took the life out of the Wolves in the, in the fourth quarter, unfortunately, and scored quite a bit down the stretch, as what you'd pretty much expect from the Bulls against the Timberwolves, unfortunately. It was just one of those games, again, where a much better team beat a not very good team, you know, and I hate to say that. Uh, Kevin Love, but yeah, too many three-point attempts by Kevin Love. There's your eight three-point attempts. He shot the ball 18 times and only made five from the floor. There it is again. He still managed, yet he still managed to get a 20 and 13 game, which is hilarious. But it's like 5 of 18 from the floor. Two back to back poor shooting nights for Kevin Love. We hope he can shake out of this funk here because that's, uh, that's frustrating to see. It's frustrating to see Kevin Love shoot so poorly. I, I think he needs to get a little more of an inside game, honestly. I mean, for a guy as good as he is, I'd like to see a little bit more of a post up game out of Kevin Love. And I think if he got that <laughs> down to a better extent, you'd see an increased field goal percentage. I mean, Ricky Rubio, for the longest time, was leading the Wolves in field goal percentage. I'm not sure if he still is. I'll check in a second. But it's like, <laughs> it's weird to see. It's like, what the heck? And yes, no, Ridnauer. Amazingly, Ridnauer is leading the, the team in uh, field goal percentage. No, Anthony Randolph, excuse me, 55%, but he plays much less than Ridnauer. But of guys that play big time minutes, yeah, Ridnauer is actually leading the team in field goal percentage, which is weird. That's weird when you think about it. But um, it's just uh, one of those deals, man. It's it's weird. It's weird to see uh, a guy like Kevin Love only shooting forty four percent from the floor. Too many outside shots. Too many outside shots for Kevin Love. Yeah, for the season before tonight's game, he was shooting 41% from the three-point range. And yeah, three of eight is a good percentage, I guess, but that's too many misses, man. Three of eight. That's too many shots getting missed. Like, take a higher percentage shot. 
That'd be nice once in a while. It, it sure would. I mean, it would be nice to see a little more of a post-tech game, but still, you can't complain too much at a guy who is a definite all-star. He is absolutely an all-star player. And you hope he can shake out of the little funk here that he is getting into in his overall shooting at the time being. He's only shooting 74% from the free throw line also, by the way, which is kind of alarming. Kind of. Kind of a little bit. <laughs> Just kind of a little bit. Uh, there's a couple more Twitter uh, reactions. Alan Horton talking about the Wizards, by the way, said the struggling Wizards did play pretty well versus New York in their last game. That's true. A lot of bad teams do have good games here and there. <laughs> and it's just one of those things. Mike Firkins, I hope I'm saying your name right. He says Darko was, yeah, Darko was playing pissed horrible. Please put in Randolph. That was against the Washington uh, Wizards. Darko overall, since the first week, has been pissed horrible, Mike. And I, I agree. He, he's been pissed horrible, period, in every game. The guy is, uh, he has disappeared, completely disappeared. Borderline worthless. Mike, again, says that still he probably would be able to touch the ball without turning it over, assuming, so I'm assuming he'd be less liability than Darko Milicic. Again, talking about Randolph, when I'm saying, well, Randolph was a little out of control, too. <laughs> and uh, But, hey, you know, good take by Mike, because guess what? Anthony Randolph has definitely improved the past couple of nights. And he's starting to show some of that talent he had last year. He's, he's looking good, uh, Anthony Randolph. Hopefully he's shaken off some of that funk he was in early on. And I think getting benched against the uh, San Antonio Spurs may have done that for him. It just may have. So good job to Rick Adelman pushing the right buttons with Anthony Randolph. Katia, Katia responds with, uh, or talks to me with, like, she, she's watching the game at work. We are going to win. And that was when the Wolves were kicking butt against Washington. That, that was a lot of fun. It was a fun night for the Wolves on Sunday. But, uh, well, <laughs> the Wolves' next game will be against the vaunted New Orleans Hornets in New Orleans. Yes, and <laughs> this is on Friday the 13th, by the way, so don't go to Camp Crystal Lake. I know it's January, not June, Friday the 13th, but still, don't go to Camp Crystal Lake. Don't make out, buy a, buy a cabin or anything. You know, just be careful because it is Friday the 13th. Watch out for Jason Voorhees. <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry about that <laughs> reference. But um, hopefully the Wolves can uh, bring a little bit of bad luck for those uh, New Orleans Hornets who are doing decent so far. Eric Gordon, though, their bad luck bug there with the injury. Unfortunately for him, the Hornets are 3 of 6 overall. It should be fun, though. That should be a fun night for the Wolves. They've had success in that city numerous times. Chris Paul is finally gone, but Jared Jack is looking pretty good. We'll see what happens there. You got the Wolves going, then going to Atlanta. So you got kind of a deep south little little mini trip there. Back to back deal. Wolves head to Atlanta Saturday the fourteenth. Come home against the Sacto Sacramento Kings in Target Center. I do think the Wolves will win that game. I think the Wolves go two and three in this little three game stretch. It's almost most likely record Tim Rose Explosion on Tuesday the 17th or 18th. That'll be the seventh episode number 74. If all goes well, we'll get the show in around then. But uh, I do think when I'm reviewing games next week, we'll have a 2-1 uh, stretch for the Wolves, which would be nice. They put the Wolves at a record of 5-8, and eight, which isn't all that horrible. In fact, that's the best record the Wolves have had in a long time. <laughs> Sadly, it, it would be if that were the case. I think the Wolves can come out of there with wins in New Orleans and a home game against Sacramento. Atlanta has been pretty strong this year so far, and the Wolves never, ever, ever, ever win in Atlanta. Uh, it's a very strong basketball team who has done well against a lot of good teams this year, has Atlanta. In fact, most of their losses were by a very small amount against extremely good teams. So, don't think the Wolves are going to win that one. Very impressed with the way the Hawks have actually really improved under Larry Drew. That team has improved under his coaching. Very good move by Atlanta hiring that guy. I should, I would like to mention. <laughs> oh, so humbly. So with that, we're going to mercifully <laughs> take a break after reviewing some very frustrating games. Very frustrating basketball outside of that Washington game. Yeah, we're, we're going to take a break and we're going to get to more Kevin Love talk, contract, 
extension, all that good stuff. We'll be right back right after this. back here on Timberwolves Explosion, episode number 73, which is a reminder for iPod users and other MB3 players like the Microsoft Zoom. Thank you all for joining once again, Timberwolves Explosion. Yep, sorry about the kind of depressed mood during the game reviews, but it's like some of those games were depressing. I mean, they were not very fun to watch, seeing Kevin Love shoot 3 of 16 and, and 5 of 18. It's just like... Ugh. What is this? You know, it, it, it was hard to accept a little bit. Just a little bit. And it wasn't just Kevin Love, obviously. He had the bad turnovers and such. But, yeah, Darko Milicic, who just... <laughs> I mean, I, I have a sneaky feeling when his contract's up, he won't be back in the league. I, I think he just may play himself out of the league when his contract is up. We're in year number two of a four-year deal. Four-year ditty for Darko. Will he play it out with the Wolves? We'll see. But <laughs> there will be a guy we hope will play out a contract, a long a long and lucrative contract with the Minnesota Timberwolves. His name is Kevin Love, and he officially, now this on uh, Real GM, you know, so we're going to cite Real GM for this, officially an interview on, e, on 1500ESPN.com. Good times. I mean, Kevin Love declared himself the, the best power forward in the league, number one but he won't commit to signing a mass deal with the Wolves. But really, from what he said here, I'm not really sure it's like he's a non-committal. It's not really that he's non-committal. He just he didn't really talk about it that much. So, whatever. It wasn't like, I'm not going to commit to that. But, uh, yes, they asked him to compare himself to with Blake Griffin, who's the best power forward in the league. Kevin Love's, Kevin Love's quote is, I believe I'm the best four in the league. I think you have to believe that. I think you have to believe that you're the best. I think Muhammad Ali even said, I was the greatest before I knew I was. I think everybody needs to have that mindset. That's part of winning. Winning the mind game (laughs) from the very start. You have to believe it. You have to hold yourself accountable. Uh, Love also touched on the possibility. The Wolves offering a maximum contract that would pay him as much as $80 over five years. Which I think at this point, now $80 It's a lot of money, and it's a lot of money. And myself and Marcus the Forecaster last year, uh, uh, about a year ago, literally, uh, well, probably about February, you'll hear myself kind of leaning towards, well, if you had to pick, I mean, the, I was thinking getting Rudy, the, the excuse me, the Memphis Grizzlies giving Rudy Gay a million was ridiculous. But but if you had a gun to your head and you had to pick one guy between Rudy Gay and Kevin Love to get 80 million, for me it would be Kevin Love. Marcus the Forecaster said neither. At this point, I got it. I'm absolutely saying, do it because Kevin Love. I mean, yeah, last year was just one year, and um, uh, we didn't. We were hoping and praying Kurt Rambis wouldn't be back. Luckily, he's not back. Kevin Love looks better than ever this year. Better than last year. He absolutely is worth 80 million now. Absolutely, at this point. Uh, Rudy Gay is not an $80 million player. I would say 60 or 70 for five years for Rudy Gay at, at his best. Honestly. Or maybe four years, 50, you know. But Kevin Love, five years, 80. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm all in, folks. I'm all in, Timberwolves fans. I'm in all the way. In head first. <laughs> no doubt. But uh, when he talked about the possibility of the contract, he said, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that at this point. It's all in my agent's, my agent's hands, that being Jeff Schwartz. So I, uh, he says people can speculate and say what they want, but I will just go out there, play basketball, and help this team win, which is, of course, a very, very, uh, you know, that's like a frequently asked question right there for players talking about long-term contracts. I'm just going to go out there, 
give a hundred ten percent. No tomorrow, day to day. That's basically all that was. So I don't know if that's non-committal. It's just kind of. I, I just let my agents in the, in the front office take care of that. That's just that's usually what everybody says. So I uh, I don't know whatever. <laughs> you know, it, and it's one of those things you can't you can't really talk about it much anyway. Like, granted, he didn't come out and say, "Oh, I can't wait to sign a contract in Minnesota." He's just playing poker, pretty much, which is what you'd expect. He said, he, but they say he wouldn't rule out staying in Minnesota, which is great. <laughs> he says, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I'm happy to be a Timberwolf at this point and happy we're winning games. Yeah, well, I guess that is kind of non-committal and a little scary. I hope he doesn't want to go to uh, L.A. or to Portland or something, which is kind of where he's from around that area. I hope he isn't saying that. It's actually kind of annoying to hear that type of stuff. It could be just kind of trying to scare the wolves into saying, okay, we have to give them the max deal. <laughs> I have no idea what to think. But but no, I mean, I absolutely agree. Kevin Love is the best four in the league. He is. He's even better than, than Blake Griffin. Uh, Blake Griffin's defense is not as good as Love's, even though Love's defense is not good. But it's better than it's been. It's better than last year. Um... It's funny to think, though, that the Lakers offered Paul Gasol for Kevin Love earlier, like back during the Chris Paul time. Yeah, that's funny. I, 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 I wouldn't have done that. And no, that's be, that's even before this season started. I wouldn't have done that. No way. No way. Paul Gasol is on the way down. Love is still on the way up. I don't think so. I mean, Kevin Love is still only 23, ladies and gentlemen. This is And this is his fourth year in the league already. Scary, isn't it? Frightening. Frightening. What to think about Kevin Love? I have no idea. I mean, that may have been just frustration talking right there, saying, like, why haven't the Wolves offered the max yet? And that might be what that is. Maybe they're offering $70 million. I have no idea. Maybe they're playing low ball, playing hard ball with uh, Kevin Love and his agent, Jeff Schwartz, or whatever his name is. I, I have no idea what to think about that. Uh, it's a little bit frustrating to, to see. I just hope and pray it gets done. Do they have till the 25th of January until this gets done. Why it's the 25th of January, I have no idea, but contractually uh, and all that stuff, that's, I guess, where it's at. And then we're stuck into the point of those crappy one-year uh, restricted uh, free agent type of deals, those tender offer type of deals. We'll be down to that point, and that's when things get a little bit shady, a little bit shaky. Yeah, we'll as will start getting a little bit nervous if we get to that point. Well, it is... Today is what? What is today? The the tenth of January, right? So we have fifteen days. Will we be announcing a Kevin Love deal by Timberwolves Explosion episode number seventy five or seventy four? Will it happen? Will it happen? I sure hope so. I absolutely, absolutely hope so. Uh, one final thing to note: there's talk about yeah. I mean, Rick Edelman talking about how the team was struggling to execute his offense. We cite uh, Real GM again for the quotes picked up by Rick Adelman. It, it, interesting to hear him say some of this stuff a little bit. He says he's never been in a situation like this. The stuff we're trying to run, we're not getting anything compared to what I'm u- normally <laughs> used to seeing. Yeah, I mean, the, the, we lead the league right now in the, uh, the turnover percentage. Wow, I mean, percentages that result in a turnover, possessions that result in turnover at 17%. Yikes. Our team is really struggling offensively right now. This is not an excuse, but it's a reality. We haven't had a chance to zero to zero in on anything but pick and rolls with a limited practice time. I don't want to put too much new stuff in because we're not doing a lot of things well. And that's officially via the Pioneer Press, but got this from a Real GM. Those quotes right there are... Kind of, kind of, kind of tough to swallow a little bit as a Wolves fan. It's kind of frustrating, though. In a way, when you see the team playing this much better than last year and the year before and the year before and the year before, yet they're struggling. It's kind of funny to think they're struggling that bad, yet they still look that much better. It tells you a how bad the team was in previous the previous four, five, six, seven years, but also <laughs> it, it tells you still that they're still struggling a bit, and, and 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 that's a shame. I mean, it's still a little bit alarming to see things uh, struggle the way they are. It's it's unfortunate, and 
games like tonight, games like, well, t- tonight was fun, but still, they got beat pretty handily. Games like Toronto, Cleveland, uh, not good games. Th- those are not good basketball games. Memphis Grizzlies, those are not good games, and that's definitely struggling. There's no doubt about it. So those are the games where the team does not really look improved at all. And uh, these quotes were officially written down uh, on the uh, on Sunday. These quotes were actually officially came from Sunday. So that would be like the Cleveland and, and Memphis games where the Wolves looked like crap, uh, quite quite honestly. Especially the Cleveland game. And things really haven't improved that much outside of, well, Washington was, was great, and tonight looked good at times, yet we just didn't win. We just did not win. Uh, clearly this is a better team at home, yet at the same time you come back with, again, the Memphis and Cleveland games, which were not good basketball games for this team. So, but... but <laughs> As I said in the previous segment, the, the long segment, you could call it, I do. I am mean, picking the Wolves to go 2-1 and one in the next three. That's right. I think we're going to win in New Orleans, lose in Atlanta, and win at home against the Sacramento Kings. A team that already has a new coach, amazingly. A team that <laughs> has talent, but there's a mess. DeMarcus Cousins re- requesting a trade and all that stuff. Not requesting, more like demanding and acting like a retard. And, of course, Paul Westphal already, already fired from the Sacramento Kings. Quite unfortunate for him. But it's just like that's how they, that's that's how it is, you know. What do you do? Paul, poor, I mean, poor Paul Westphal. He's kind of been in a lot of tough situations in his career. Phoenix Suns' situation was good, and then it just went down the toilet after about three years. Well, after they went on that great run to play the Bulls in 93. But Paul Westphal's uh, coaching career, checkered unfortunately for him, and that's about it. So, yeah, I mean, I think the Wolves will beat that team at home. I think that's, if the Wolves lose, (laughs) like, put it this way, if the Wolves come back with a losing record in the next three games, (laughs) that's bad. That's a bad bad sign, folks. That's a bad sign, and that means the Wolves really, their improvement, their learning curve and their improvement uh, level won't be quite what a lot of us want, and that would be a shame. But no, I, I, I hate to sound negative. There, there's a lot of reasons to be positive. You have the best power forward in the game. You have a guy who might be regarded as a top five point guard within a year or two in Ricky Rubio, who is an assist machine already, who actually does have a pretty good shot, and who is a very good ball handler. And he knocks the ball out of, out of players' hands. He blocks people's shots. Ricky Rubio is an overall very, very, very good point guard who could become even better. So... We're going to end on a positive note with that. I mean, hey, and then you got a guy like Derek Williams, a little bit up and down, but at the same time, clearly a guy who I think is going to be the real deal in this league. What will truly be his identity as a basketball player? Not sure yet. To me, he looks like an athletic guy who can who can also hit the outside shot. And to me, that means he has a chance to be a complete player in this league because he can rebound the basketball. Yes, he can. Can he be a great defender? Absolutely no idea yet. No idea whatsoever. But on a positive note, you got at least three guys, at least three guys who appear to be legit players for many, many years to come. <laughs> now let's just sign that doggone contract. <laughs> so with that said, we are going to get to the contact details. Tim Rose Explosion, again, is available on the sportstuff.com and on iTunes. We would like you to join those message boards on the sportsstuff.com. Go to the front page of the website. Simply click on the button that says TSS Boards. Then click Register. Get that screen name. Get on those boards and talk basketball with a lot of cool people. That would be fun. There are a lot of basketball fans on the sportsstuff.com. Do get in conversation with them. It would be oh so worth it. The phone line for the, for the Timberwolves Explosion in the sportsstuff.com, 209-736-7877. 209-736-7877. It is a voicemail. Do treat it as such. Mention which show you are calling in for, which is Timberwolves Explosion, and then do your statement, shout out, question, comment, whatever it is, and you'll be on board with me. Talking basketball would be so, so cool. Bob from Minneapolis, if you're out there, call in again. I miss you. Would be very cool. Haven't heard from you in forever. Nick Borboom, Nicholas, Nick Borboom, call in. 209 209- 736-7877. Most cell phones have that long distance number deal, even though know, you're calling a, a Skype number. It's like it's long distance, but it's not like international. It's not going to charge you anything. 
at all. Don't worry about it. Just call in and, and have fun. Any of you out there, call in and have fun. Talk basketball. There's, there's a lot to talk about with this team. There's a lot. It would be very, very cool indeed. Twitter.com forward slash Wolves Explosion. Twitter.com forward slash Wolves Explosion. Do join the Timberwolves Facebook page. Go to Facebook. Go into the search bar. Type in Timberwolves Explosion, Minnesota Timberwolves. You'll get two deals coming up. There'll be the Facebook group and the Facebook page. I prefer to you prefer you to join the Facebook page by going to it and clicking like and commenting on there. But you're also welcome to join the group and comment on there if you so desire to do so. It would be terrific. Would love to have you on there and comment. No comments this week. Uh, Nick Borvum, I miss hearing from you. I'm sorry I didn't respond more on the, on the Facebook page or Facebook group in his case. I'll be more active on that page and group. Hopefully you're out there. Aussie Wolf, hope you're still out there, buddy. I miss you. It's a shout out to you, Aussie Wolf. Very cool. All you listeners, again, thank you so very much for making episode number 72 a very positive. And let's hope we can make 73 here a positive as well. So until next week, when the Wolves come back 5-8, and eight, we will bid adieu. Take care, everybody. Take care, everybody.